guys, my name is Catherine Barner, host of Cat Skidenza, and today I am joined by Doug Marsh of Built to Spill. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing pretty good, a little early in the morning, but you know, excited to be here and excited to be chatting with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. So last night you played at Modest Music Fest uh, here in Moscow, Idaho for the second time in a row. So why did you just decide to come back as a solo act this year? Uh, that's how uh, I was invited back this uh -huh. year. So obviously you just absolutely love the Palouse and you love Moscow because um, Built to Spill and you, you've been just coming here for so many years. So what do you love about just this area so much? Um, well, you know, I never get much of a chance to see much of Moscow when we're here, but, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, it's beautiful up here mm -hmm. it's, and um, it's always fun to play music. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Let's see. Built to Spill, you guys released a album in 2015. So with this 26-year career that you've had, how would you say the music has changed and developed? Um, well, I think each record or even each song is kind of its own individual thing. And, mm -hmm. it's, you know, sometimes there's a development or change. Sometimes, you know, we kind of do the same thing for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I never really think of it that way. It just uh, doesn't seem like there's any progress. It's just time passing and working on different things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know that there's been any any distinct change over the years that that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, since you guys have had such a long career, long successful career, um, some lo lovely sound effects there. <laughs> I got that in the last interview too. That'll be fun to edit out. But um, you know, the music industry itself has changed a lot mm -hmm. over the the past twenty six years. How would you say you've had to change what you've done in order to f fit into the evolution? Well, um, we've always kind of toured pretty pretty well and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that and that's kind of what most bands had to end up doing because record sales went down. So yeah. it didn't really affect us that much. We never really sold that many records ever anyway. Um, that being said, we you know did better when we were selling records than we do now streaming stuff. But mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the way things go. I think for a long time the record industries were charging people so much money and artists got used to getting that much money. And yeah. now might be really what it should have always kind of more mm -hmm. looked like and people making more money off of playing shows than mm -hmm. off of uh, you know, the rights to their recorded music. Mm -hmm. So you do have your own solo album that you released in 2002, correct? Yeah. And that music is very different from what Built to Spill uh, plays. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, your personal record and how you decided to do more of like the blues uh, country kind of vibe for that? Sure. Um, I think around that time, that record, I think I made it a few years before it actually came out, and I kind of m just finished making Keep It Like a Secret, mm -hmm. um, Built Spill album, and I was kind of just burnt out on rock and roll. Yeah. And, you know, started listening to some of the old country blues. Mm -hmm. Fred McDowell, he was kind of my biggest influence, but, you know, other people as well. And uh, I just kind of wanted to learn that slide technique. Mm -hmm. And rather than learn actual old blues songs, I just would make up my own little riffs mm -hmm. and just kind of play them and practice them just to get the technique, you know, figured out. And I had a bunch of those little parts and just over time they kind of started turning into little songs and then um, I, tried write, I tried to write kind of like traditional sounding lyrics and like, like mm -hmm. maybe try to tell a story or something yeah. and I couldn't do it at all. <laughs> So it's a very gave, Johnny Cash-esque of trying to tell a story in a song. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, even a lot of those old blues songs where they'll, you know, tell, yeah, and, and I couldn't do it at all. Or Woody, Woody Guthrie, I love that. Yeah. Um, so instead, my wife and I ended up kind of writing more, more uh, abstract lyrics for mm -hmm. the record. And, and then just recorded it at home, and eventually um, Warner Brothers put it out. Nice. Um, have you ever thought about doing another solo album like that? Not really. I mean, I think, I mean, I'd love to, but I can't just say I'm going to do something and sit down and do it. Yeah. Really, it has to happen. You know, I have to stumble across some songs. Mm -hmm. I can't decide I'm going to write acoustic songs. I have to stumble into it. Because my, 
I, I prefer the rock band. I prefer rock music. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but at some point, may, maybe if it happens naturally, I, I would be happy to do it. Yeah. So what advice would you give to young artists and bands who are trying to maintain a long career like you have? Is there anything that you encountered as a <laughs> musician that maybe you didn't quite expect? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I have no advice. I think people just fo have to follow their hearts. And mm -hmm. as far as like, I mean, there's just so much just luck and chance in this yeah. stuff, you know? There's, there's so many avenues, so many ways to do it. And, you know, it has to do with knowing people that can help you. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, I guess the, the advice that I would give is just to do it, do it because you love it. And, mm -hmm. you know, if things fall into place and you can get a career out of it, great. But if not, you know, uh, at least you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so last night at Mikey's Euros, you played with two different guitars. Could you tell us about um, the differences between the guitars and um, why you've chosen those ones to play with? Sure, yeah, the first half of the set or most of the set was just standard tuning. Mm -hmm. And then the last few songs were in an open tuning for the slide guitar. All right. Um, let's see. So I have a fan submitted question mm -hmm. for you um, from Twitter user Tom Cocaine. He's the uh, regional host for All Things Considered at Northwest Public Broadcasting. And he says, you just turned 49. Happy birthday. How's Thanks. life for you? And did you imagine your life, uh, what did you imagine your life being like after you started Build to Spill? Hmm, well, life's okay. It's kind of crazy and busy. And yeah. A lot going on right now, but, um, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I guess, I always just took it kind of a day at a time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much of a future plan for Built to Spill. Um, when I started the band, I my goal was to maybe hopefully s have someone else pay for us to record a record, and mm -hmm. that was about as far as I was dared to dream. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, mm, yeah, I just, just kind of took it a day at a time. And, yeah. and, now I kind of start thinking about the future now that I'm 49 years old, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm still uh, not a very um, forward-looking person. Mm -hmm. Still taking it one day at a time? Maybe a little too much. Like, like your song lyrics, tomorrow is... Um, I, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff about t tomorrow over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for sitting down with me. Do you have any last words you'd like to say to the audience? No. No? And where can people find your music? I don't know. Uh, Anywhere music is I think streamed so, and yeah. sold? Look on the internet. <laughs> I have no idea. Hopefully it's some independent local rate, uh, record stores. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine.